right, my, my next guest is a writer of a, a book which I've just finished reading. Uh, he wrote it a while ago and I just finished reading it. It's very good. And I said, said is he around? Maybe he could come on. And, they, and then we called him up and he said, okay. <laughs> He's also the co-creator of Game of Thrones on HBO, and he's a talented, you know, he wrote this book, and it's available as well. David Benioff, everybody, David Benioff. David, welcome, lovely to see you. Good welcome. to see you, Chris. I have to say, I, you wrote this a while ago? Yeah, about five years ago. Because I just finished reading it, and I have to say, no kidding, flat, hands down, flat out, masterpiece. Masterpiece. Thank you. Wow. I was like, oh, my goodness, this is great. This is the kind of fiction that you don't get in the, the anymore. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank but you. It's, it's really, I mean, it's like, a, it's very dark tale, though. Very dark, kind of Russian novel, grim, kind of... It's very, dark. It's there's cannibalism, there's, you know, but the, the strangest thing is all the darkest stuff actually happened. I mean, it's, um, you know, the siege of Leningrad, which took place 900 days where the German forces surrounded the city and uh, starved yeah. them out, bombed them out, shelled them, and... And, uh, and yet, I and laughed out loud in about four yeah. places. And that, no, that, see, that to me is extraordinary, right? because that's the humanity in it. But this is the fascinating thing is you read the diaries of the people who actually survived the siege and they're completely devoid of self-pity and it's not, you know, it's, it's just people trying to get through incredibly hard times and they had this great macabre black humor and that's the way they went about, that's the way they survived. This you, you had me fooled in this at the beginning though when you do the, the fictional grandparents because I thought, because you said I was writing this book on the, the diary or the, my grandparents war reminiscences and then I thought, oh, it's all true. But it turned yeah. out it was all lies. Turns out. <laughs> It turns, yeah, my father, uh, yeah, the, the grandfather in the book uh, is from Leningrad. The grand, my real grandfather grew up in a farm in Delaware, so... They're, yeah, they're different. Uh, now, did you go, have you been there? It's now St. Petersburg again, of course. Have you, have you been have, there? I have, yes. I would, and you've been there, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I have. I loved it. Did you like I, it? Oh, yeah. I, see, I loved Russia. I think the people there are extraordinary. They're yeah. really fun and weird. Uh, yeah. They're kind of like, they're like kind of Irish, but crazier. You yeah. <laughs> know? They actually drink. I live in Ireland now for most of the year. Right, of course, Game of Thrones in Belfast, yeah. 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 And so you think of the Irish are great drinkers, but the Russian style of drinking just takes it to a different level. Right. I mean, they're, because the, the, the Irish are social drinkers. They sit in a pub and you have pints, and the Russians, they sit there and they, you order a bottle of vodka, and it comes and they fill up your glass, and you have to down it. And if you don't, you're not really a man. You got to just I know. down that. And then I left, see, because I was in Russia after I got sober, and so I wouldn't drink the vodka, and they were like, right. what? what? Well, they were out. You're like a eunuch. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, m much like I am here, but they. <laughs> but I, it's, it's fat. And the Game of Thrones is a huge success. Congratulations. That's so uh, that's really. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. But you, why? Why do you shoot it in Belfast? Does it look like a mythical land where magic is dying? Belfast. Um, you, you drive about 10 minutes outside of Belfast and you get into the mountains, you get to old rivers and, and uh, stony shores. There's all the different locations we need for the show are right there. And right. most of our cast is from the UK. A lot of Scottish actors. Yes, I know. I, I wasn't called, but I know some that were. Well, season four, though. We've yeah, got yeah. a great part for you. I think that would be great. I could be the kind of late night douche of uh, <laughs> Game of Thrones, the late night douchovia. We've already uh, <laughs> <laughs> we already have a late night douche, but you can. <laughs> Well, Joff Leno Joffrey. again, <laughs> again, Leno. <laughs> yes, we could use you. No, no, but do you like it over there? Have you been around? Have you been around the I UK? I'm originally from there. You're from Glasgow. I in Scotland. Yeah. Now, here's what I read. I read that Glasgow has the uh, people die younger in Glasgow than any other city in Western Europe. That's possibly true, but it's only because we are so awesome. <laughs> But it's, it's something frightening. For the men, it's like it's, yeah, 51 it's, or something. You're kidding me. I'm 50. <laughs> <laughs> you're Tootsie Fruits with me. <laughs> Just like you did in the book. You're Tootsie Fruits with me. <laughs> you're a liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> for a living. I wickied you. Now it's true about Glasgow, though. Really? Just you... like the truth about Leningrad, but, but I made up the 51 part. It's more like 62 or something. So you got time. <laughs>
Very few people mess with my head the way you're doing it right now. Do you ever, uh, do you ever start a book and you think, or or a storyline even for Game of Thrones, and you think, is you know what, this is too sick and dark. I can't, I can't. You don't actually, you don't, do you? Because no. I've never in here. I'm like no. that thing with the cannibals when they go up to that loft. The the, the big man takes. Yeah. Oh man, I was like, yeah, which is based on a true story, and I mean, legitimately based on a true story. Uh, there's a wonderful book called The 900 Days, which is the the great nonfiction account of what happened during the siege, and it talks about the cannibalism, and that's you know the city was surrounded by the German army for 900 days through yeah. the course of the worst winters in Russian history. They had nothing to eat. And ultimately, they eat each would other. You, would you eat human flesh if you had to? Uh, if, if I had to survive, if I had to survive, I think I probably would. If I didn't like the person, it would be hard. No, I don't know, man. I think I'd be more inclined to eat someone that I liked. Like someone but, I didn't like, I'd be like, Poof. yeah. But yeah. I'd be like, oh, it tastes like curry. But see, my. Yeah. <laughs> But Susan, for instance. Susan's surrounded? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I'd, right. I'd have a go at that. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't need, that, need condiments or anything, man. <laughs> Are you a fan of uh, Susan's? Uh, yeah, of course. You ever worked together? No. Oh, right. No. Yeah. <laughs> She's far too classy. Oh, come on. <laughs> what are you talking about? You do classy work, and you're married to a very classy woman. I am. A very I lovely am. guest on this show. She's the one classy thing about me. To be ah, your tie's pretty nice. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no. It, 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 it's, well, you wrote Troy as well, didn't you? Yeah, Not the original yes, one. The original yes. was some other guy. No, that was some other blind fella, but uh, I did do the adaptation. Yep. So, Brad Pitt. Are you going to say something mean? No, no. I like that movie. It was on cable recently, and I was like, what's the deal? I like this movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's an epic story of Troy. How it's could you not like story. it? Yeah. And it had Eric Bana. Is, uh, it was wonderful. He's fantastic in that movie, and you had uh, um, that guy. Orlando Bloom. Orlando Bloom, Orlando. yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Playing Helen of Troy. He's so beautiful. <laughs> He's, I have to say, one of the flaws in the movie is I'm watching this and it's Orlando Bloom and who played Helen? It was a, that lovely actress. Diana Kruger. Diana Kruger. But as I'm looking at them together, because, you know, uh, Orlando must have been what, in the mid-twenties, early-twenties when he made it. Mm. And I'm thinking, he is prettier than her. I mean, <laughs> he's pretty. Yeah, he's is, a pretty guy. He is beautiful. She's, she's very beautiful. She's very beautiful. But if you ever want to feel... But Orlando Bloom's prettier. If you, want, if you want to feel truly emasculated, if you want to feel like a complete uh, schmuck, Walk into a restaurant, because this is what I did while we were shooting that movie. I walked into a restaurant. Uh, this is a horrible name-dropping story. I just, well, it's because we're, we're talking about Troy. Yeah, yeah. I walked into a restaurant with Orlando Bloom and Brad Pitt, and every single woman in the restaurant turned, like pivot, like that, to look. And that, that was a you, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Not a single person. You might as well have been, you know, Alfred Hitchcock walking in there. And anyway, horrible story. So you were saying that Alfred Hitchcock was unattractive. <laughs> That's going to be, you, you know, you're going to be the next feud in here. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. He wasn't Benioff sexy. says Hitchcock's a bitch. He, a, a genius, but not a sexy a, genius. Not right? a sexy right. genius. Well, kind of sexy in his own weird way. Well, okay. Yeah, it's a reach. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, well, and, and we're... you were a bouncer. I was a bouncer, yeah, yeah for a while. Yeah, right, very yeah. bad at it. Were you a bouncer? At Save the Robots. Yeah, yeah. I was, the worst, I was the worst one ever. Well, first of all, look at me. <laughs> Second of all, I was... Uh, I hated it because you see... A, you were a bouncer at Save the Robots, too? No, no, no. I was a bouncer in San Francisco. But oh. I grew up in New York, so I know Save the Robots. Yeah, yeah, I was a bouncer yeah. there, yeah. I was... Uh, well, because for me, I don't know about for you, but you see a fight break out in a bar, like two drunken idiots. Uh, you're taking together. me back now, yeah. 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 <laughs> and my instinct is just to have a pint and kind of watch. And sure. Look at that. But as yeah. a bouncer, you actually have to wade in there and. Oh, like, that's oh, for so. the that's for the guys who are actually bouncing. I was more <laughs> administrative. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> this is what I didn't learn. I didn't learn that until far too late. Oh, you actually which, got which involved? Explains, you know, no, don't, the, the man. Don't get process. involved. It was a big mistake. Yeah, it's it a big, big mistake. Well, listen, we're out of time. Yeah, you want some fruit? Fruit would be great. Okay. Um, listen, I can't say much, but uh, Susan Sarandon had her hands on that coconut. Yes. And why did you have your coconut shaved, Craig? I, that's what I don't understand. You know, three days after I did it, I asked myself the same thing. <laughs> Thank you.
God. David Benioff, everybody. David Benioff. Craig. David, it's, it's lovely to see you. Congratulations on uh, Game of Thrones. It seems like f a few people like it. Thank you, sir. It's huge. Yeah. Man. It's huge. It's crazy. Wild. You must be a billionaire now. We no, I'm far from billionaire, but uh, I'm not. You're richer yeah. than I am. No, I'm not rich at all. I spent all my money on frisbees and uh, stuff for Heather Graham. <laughs> <laughs> And my cup, of course. That's a fancy cup. That's yeah, a fancy cup. It doesn't measure. Yours is not fancy, but uh, it's my show. Doesn't like, <laughs> on Game of Thrones, do you have your own fancy cup? Uh, it's not With the dragon's cool. head no and everything? I should get one of those. Yeah, you That's should. A good idea. The show is really good. I think. I don't know. You I haven't seen watched. any of it. You never watched. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, here's the thing. I, I, I saw the title sequence last night for the yeah. first time, okay. and I'd never seen anything else, and I was about to watch it. And then I thought, I can't. I can't start now. I'll have to go back to the beginning and watch it from the beginning. Right. But we employ half your country on that show. I mean, everyone who works on the crew is Scottish. So I feel like you should, should watch. No, I want to watch it because of two things. One, I've heard that, that it's very good. And right. two, I've heard there's a lot of bare naked ladies. In it. <laughs> and uh, those are the kind of things that I like. A good storyline and boobies. You got me. We have those two things. So. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Do you ever get a little kind of like, like, do you write in the boobies? Or who makes the booby decisions? <laughs> Do you know, you're like, she walks in and uh, her top's off. Uh, I'm just, I'm imagining watching this now with my wife. Uh, uh, yeah, we make the decision of which scenes are going to, you know, we have the brothel scenes and there are... Well, that's easy. If it's a right. brothel scene, you go right. in the brothel scene, all right. the, all the, you it's know... not that easy, Craig. Those brothel scenes take a lot of work. Yeah, I bet they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, what about uh, what about writing another book? Your last book, City of Thieves, was fantastic. I loved that book. Thank you Could so have much. done with some more boobies Thank in it. If I, if I have to. No boobies in it. Um, no. You know, Game of Thrones is, is 52 weeks a year, so there hasn't been any time for anything else until that ends, until HBO cancels us. Yeah, they're not going to do it. They got nothing, pal. They, I mean, they're, <laughs> you're I'm, it for them. Veep is good. Well, Veep's good. That's true, Girls yeah. Girls is great. Yeah. Okay, so they got Veep and Girls and You. I mean, that's it. They're going to keep Board, you. No, Boardwalk Empire is a great show. Oh, knock it off. All right, what is this? An HBO commercial? Fine, you got some good stuff. But I thought you were going to put me in the last season of it. The you last said, thing you were no, here. This summer you're coming over. Right. Yeah. So I can be in this summer? Yeah, but can we put a beard on you? Yeah, do I have to show my boobies? Because I'm not sure about that. Uh, yeah, I want to be in it. Definite boobies, maybe an axe. I'm picturing yeah. you, axe, long hair, beard. It's like you know me. Yeah. <laughs> that, I'll wear that to the set. I'll wear, I'm ready. <laughs> your outfit from uh, How to Train Your Dragon. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was a cartoon, though. You do know yeah, that, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, so you guys live in Ireland the, the year round? We live in Northern Ireland. In Belfast, Northern yeah. Ireland, yeah. Okay, that's right. I don't want to get into Does that, though. You understand that, yeah. right? <laughs> We're not getting into that conversation. We can't. Let's leave that one aside. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you having a night? Have you tried soda bread? Uh, yeah, of course. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But you, you've kept your shape. Well, like, you've got your figure. You're slim. Well, you didn't know me back in the day. I'm well, you were, like, really, really thin. <laughs> I was, uh, I was the high school runt. I was the smallest kid in my high school class. What happened? 94 pounds. Well, you got really tall. I got tall. Did you have braces that make you hot when you're no, older? No, no. Because apparently these braces make you smoking but hot when you get older. It's one of those things. Have you ever noticed every time a beautiful actress is on a talk show, she always talks about how ugly she was back yeah. in high school? Yeah, I don't buy it. Don't buy well, it. your wife is a beautiful actress. Does she talk about how ugly she was? No, she was pretty in high school. I've seen the pictures. Right. She was pretty in high school, and I'm willing to bet Heather Graham was really beautiful back yeah, then. Yeah, I, I think that whole headgear thing's not true. <laughs> Do you, uh, do you do the casting for Game of Thrones? Yeah. See, I've always wondered, but that's kind of tricky because, you know, you're, um, you're sitting there and you're judging people on their acting ability, right? And that's one thing, and well, is this the right person for it? But are you, uh, at any point, thinking, wonder what her boobies look like? Because <laughs> you can't ask. You can't say, hey, you know, there's a lot of booby work in Game of Thrones, so can we have a flash just yeah. to see? Um... 
it, it's come up. The thing that worries us, it, you know, it's a medieval fantasy show, so it's it's a time before there were implants. Of course. So what worries yeah. us really is just you cast them. It's it's a tricky question. You know, we love, you we love your work, but are those real? You, you know, it's not. <laughs> do you <laughs> do you watch the show when it goes out? Yes, I watch it with my wife when it airs. Why? I mean, presumably you've. <laughs> It's because, a fair question. Because you've seen it many I've times seen it before that, of right? Times, hundreds of times. But what's interesting is watching it with someone who has not seen it hundreds of times. Oh, so she doesn't see it until that point. No, no, no. She doesn't see All it. Right. And I'm not allowed to tell her anything. I can't spoil anything. So I have to be careful because sometimes she'll see me typing on my laptop next to her and she'll look over and she'll see something, someone so-and-so dies and she freaks out and, and hits me. Well, um, she, she could also say, I don't want that to happen. She could, but I... So you, like, you can't kill him off. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. And I say just go drive somewhere. Oh, 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 yeah. That's the bit you want us to cut out right there. Yeah. I tell... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We have to take a break. We'll be right back with David Benioff. <laughs> Terrible job. You no. see me flying a plane. No. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Women are great drivers, aren't they, David? <laughs> we weren't talking about that a little bit. You were saying that you're the terrible driver and your wife's a great driver, right? The truth is, I am the terrible driver. Just driving here today. Yeah. That was horrible. I was, because I'm a New Yorker. I grew up in New York. Yeah. So it's just like all the terrible habits you grow up. I th I, when I lived in New York, I didn't have a car. There was no point. Right. I didn't have one growing up, but then when I lived in Brooklyn after college, then I had one, and it was back. So, you so that, hey, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what the heck? Yeah, all that stuff. This, this is good dialogue for... For, for, <laughs> for Game of Thrones? For yeah, character. yeah, all right. Uh, we need... Hey. We need a name for your character. A name for my character? Fergus. What about Flargonord? Flargonord. <laughs> Flargonord. Fergus is alright, though. I'll take Fergus. Fergus. I don't think you can put me in it, because people will go, why is the late night douche in my favorite <laughs> show? <laughs> We're going to put a giant beard on you, all right. so they don't say why. Well, they'll me. go, look, the late night douche has a beard on him, and then... You can say douche? Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Just don't flip anyone off, and we'll be good. <laughs> So listen, I asked you, you going to write another book or no? What's happening? Yes, I'm going to write another book. I have the story, and I just honestly don't have time to right now because Game of Thrones is, is uh, 52 weeks a year. But I, I, uh, I, You have I, the whole story, like, ready in your head? I have the f characters, and I know how it ends. That's enough. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's enough. That's how I start. Who do you read? Who do you like to read? Like, for recreation. Who do I like to read for recreation? Yeah, like novelists, maybe. Should I give a pretentious answer or kind of the... Give both. Give the pretentious one and then the real one. <laughs> The pretentious answer. I, I mean, I love Hemingway. I, I just, everything Hemingway wrote, uh, right. I love. Uh, the non-pretentious would be, there's a great crime writer, George Pelicanos. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I know both of these gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, not personally, but... George wrote a series of books, Right as Rain. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, really good. It's fantastic, yeah. Did you ever read, I'm reading something now that I think you'd really enjoy. Did you ever read J.B. Priestley? No, I know his name, but I... He was a, a, an English novelist, and uh, he died, I think, in 1974. So, like, 1894, uh, 1974, something like that. Really odd. Hmm. Odd, an odd kind of um, uh, mid-century British writer. I think you'd like it. Okay. Now, I've got no anecdotal <laughs> reason to tell you that, but I think you'd, you'd like Bruce it. Lee. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one I'm reading now called Festival at Farmbridge. It's about a festival at Farmbridge. <laughs> It's not a catchy title. It's a terrible title for a very weird book. Yeah. Yeah. You, do, you can't picture that title on a marquee. And well, festival, well, unless you're in Farbridge and it's festival right. time, and then, <laughs> then you'd be like, wow, it's, it's, not catchy. it's like it's here. Game of Thrones. Game, Game of Thrones, Thrones is a catchy, not, I didn't come up with it, so I can brag about it. You know, George Martin comes up with it. I don't titles. know how good a title Game of you Thrones you is, like actually. Yeah, I know. I think, you know, Throne of Games. <laughs> Game of Thrones is really catchy. Yeah, of course it's very catchy. I mean, it's like it's like me saying to somebody, oh, the Beatles, that'll never work. Of course it's catchy. <laughs> mm. Titles are tough. Yeah, I they had a hard time. City of Thieves was, was months and months of coming up with really crappy titles that my editor said, there's no way anyone's going to buy a book called Crappy Douche or whatever, <laughs> whatever it was called. 
and final. Bad stuff in Leningrad. Bad stuff. In yeah, Leningrad. yeah, it was better than most of my options. I'm bad at titles. No, it, you're good at your writing. Titles no. right away? Huh? Did you come up with your titles right away? No, I, it takes me. A, usually, the title leads to something else. Like if I, I wrote a book called Between the Bridge and the River, and I, it kind of came to me about halfway through the book. See, that's pretty good. But American on Purpose, that's a great title. Yeah, that's a good title. I think that, that is kind of obvious, though. You know. <laughs> But, like I became no an American on purpose. Yeah. But so did so did millions of other people, and no one else called their book American on purpose. Well, millions of other people didn't didn't write that book, did they? Uh, so it wasn't obvious. It well, wasn't. I see where you are. Yeah. Well, this has been great. Uh, <laughs> it's a good. But we have to go. Um, well, we we don't have to be you. You, I have, you to. have to get back to Ireland and and do some more booby casting. <laughs> Real booby. Real booby Real casting. Booby. Yeah, very important. Yeah, don't even so do I get the booby check for my beard? Well, the beard will be big enough to cover up the... Uh... Are yours real? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll take your word on it. It's always a pleasure to see you. <laughs> David Benioff, everybody. We're right.